All right, guys, what we have today is the USS Excelsior from either Star Trek Three or Star Trek VI. Uh, big thanks to Round Two, who sent us this copy for us to review, and big thanks to AllScaleTrek.com, which is pretty much one of the best forums for building Star Trek models. Now, there is a lot to be said about the USS Excelsior, a lot to be said about the ship and the kit. Um, I started thinking about this last night, and Star Trek III really produced the most studio models I think that Star Trek film has ever made. They made, of course, the Excelsior, the Klingon Bird of Prey, uh, the USS Grissom, when it went on to be all sorts of ship in the next generation. It did the Merchantman freighter um, that once again was reused all over the place in the next generation. Um, it did a studio model for Space Dock. Really, when they made Star Trek III, they made a lot of physical models and a lot of subjects for us scale modelers uh, to make over the years. But out of those, the Excelsior really stands out. And as one should be, when I first saw it, I was I was offended. How could somebody try and make a replacement to the Enterprise? It was it was just crazy. Um, but it is a ship that has absolutely grown on me. And there's a lot of cool facts about the Excelsior. Uh, did you know it was actually in the script for Star Trek II uh, when Sulu and Kirk are taking the travel pod to the Enterprise? And Kirk says he's glad to have Sulu aboard for a while. It was supposed to go on and they were supposed to say right then and there that Sulu was going to get his own command of the USS Excelsior. Uh, that got dropped um, out of the script, uh, but then you did see the Excelsior in Star Trek Three, And of course, in Star Trek VI, uh, Sulu is actually in command of the Excelsior, and uh, it's one of the big hero ships for that. It's also seen in Star Trek Voyager. Now, the interesting thing on Star Trek Voyager is the warp nacelles did not light up on the Excelsior in either Star Trek Three or Six. But in Star Trek Voyager, the nacelles do light up. Uh, so a little bit of variety there. Now, Industrial Light and Magic, who built the Excelsior model, uh, they actually campaigned for the Enterprise to be replaced at the end of Star Trek IV, uh, mostly because they really liked filming the studio model they made for the Excelsior, and they hated filming uh, the big Constitution refit that they'd been using for the USS Enterprise in the previous movies. Of course, they lost that, and um, the Constitution class went on to be the Enterprise uh, for the rest of the movies, as well it should. Now, of course, with the popularity of the Excelsior, this is not the first time that AMT has released uh, a model kit of the USS Excelsior. This is a vintage Excelsior kit that I built years ago. Um, but what is being released now, I believe it was released in 2016 and re-released this year, is an updated version of that old vintage kit. So let's take a look at this new updated Excelsior. Uh, so first we get the box art that they've been doing. Um, they're sticking with Captain Kirk for Star Trek III. Um, so we don't get Sulu on this. Um, we get a wonderful shot of the Excelsior model. Product information along the top, a couple shots of the ship from the movie, and a very nice decal sheet. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Along the back, we get 18 inches long, 47 parts. Uh, a big note that it's either from Star Trek III or Star Trek VI. And you can, in fact, build it either way. You can build it as it was seen in the first movie or as seen in Star Trek VI. Okay, so let's start looking at the plastic for this kit. And let's look at what they've done this time around uh, from 2016 onward to make this a better kit than it was back in the day. Um, so on this sprue, we have the top saucer. And the first big difference, well, there's a couple of big differences here, is the mod, the bridge 
is no longer molded on. Uh, you get either a Star Trek 6 bridge or a Star Trek 3 bridge that you can put on yourself right here to pick and make it accurate to the movie that you're trying to portray. Uh, the other really big change here is all of the grid lines on the saucer are now recessed. Now, this is a saucer from the USS Enterprise B. It was based upon the Excelsior. And it's a little hard to tell, but these lines that radiate out, those are actually raised on the old Excelsior kit and the Enterprise B kit. Um, here, they are recessed as they properly should be. The other kind of neat thing you'll see on this sprue is you get a couple different hangar bay pieces. I believe this is the hangar bay from Star Trek VI, and this is the hangar bay uh, from Star Trek III. And they even have little molded in shuttles on both of those. Now, I think you'll have to alter this part. You'll have to cut open these doors for you to be able to see those shuttles. Uh, but if that's something you want to do to portray an open hangar bay, you can definitely do that. So you can kind of see this is the way it would fit. This is the way it gets covered up. And these are the doors you can open in order to see the little shuttles that they've put right at the end there. So I, I think all of this is new and better detail than was done before. On the back of the saucer, uh, you can now do an impulse crystal here, or you can put this part on it and do two little impulse crystals. I think that's the way it was done in Star Trek VI. So much better gridding. You get a choice of kind of what parts you want to use on it and a lot more detail and choices for the interiors of those hangar bays. All right, this sprue has um, kind of the cowl that goes over that shuttle bay area. These would be the doors you'd have to cut open if you want to show that hangar bay. Uh, this is kind of the infamous three-piece neck that you have to put together um, to make that wonderful ridged neck that the Excelsior has. Um, on this update, you do actually get the photon torpedo assemblies molded in. Uh, they were just kind of empty squares on the old one. Um, here you get... Uh, some more parts for the nacelles. This sprue is largely unchanged, except for those photon torpedo areas. And here you can see the old photon torpedoes, uh, just blank squares. And there are the new ones. It's really the same story here. Um, so here, uh, you get the same part, but you get a lot more detail both on the top part of this assembly and the bottom part. Once again, the top part, this is almost all done with decals. There's a raised part right here where it's kind of painted green, uh, otherwise completely smooth. Uh, compare that to here where you do have a lot of those lines actually put into it. And underneath, you can see there's one raised square. The rest of this is decals. Here you do get a lot more detail. Here's the lower saucer. And if we start off by looking at the old kit, you can see uh, no detail here. You can see you've got the raised grid lines. Um, and that is about a little bit of bumps for the phasers. Now compare that to the new one. Uh, the new one, starting off, you get um, more molded in detail here for all of that, you get better phaser bumps, and then you get the recessed grid, and you also get these little hatches um, molded in along the side, and some of the molded detail in the trench. So all in all, like always on this kit, more detail, more accurate detail than there was on the original kit. Looking at the clear sprue, uh, you get these really long parts to line the nacelle, just like you did in the old kit. Um, you get some new parts down here. This is the old deflector dish, and I believe the deflector dish shouldn't really have those spokes, so they give you a version without the spokes. You also get clear parts for uh, the crystals on top of the saucer. The big one can go here if you do that version, or the two little crystals will go here if you do that version. Um, you get a couple clear parts for um, the 
engines in the back of the saucer, the ones that kind of fit in right here. And then I am not sure about these. These might be just left over on the mold from when the mold was for the Enterprise B. And these might be um, the engine parts that go on the Enterprise B right here. And the last thing to look at is uh, the nacelles. These look completely unchanged. These look like they actually do still have that old raised grid pattern on it. So I think some light sanding will take that off. Um, if that's been taken off the rest of the ship, I don't think I'd really want to leave it on the nacelles. The last big change in this tooling is the side of the saucer is now smooth and sloped, and you do have some molded in um, control thrusters. Uh, the old one had stair steps instead of slopes. Um, you still had the control thrusters. They were probably a little bit out of scale, um, but the stair step really was not accurate or appropriate for the ship. Here's a look at the decal sheet. Uh, so the biggest thing about the decal sheet is it does come with all of the windows um, on the decals for you. So you don't need to paint those. You'll put them on with decals. Uh, you get some of the larger uh, pinstripes to go around the hull. You get all the red pinstripes. You get decals for those thrusters and phaser banks. Of course, you can call it the NCC 2000 as it was in Star Trek VI or the NX 2000 uh, from back when it was still an experiment in Star Trek III. And of course you get kind of the tiger striping uh, done here. That's nice. I, um, I think that's a good color there. I don't like it when it's a real bright yellow on Excelsior builds, but a very, very nice um, decal sheet for the Excelsior. So I haven't started building this kit yet, but I can tell you this is probably the best re-release of a vintage kit that Polar Light slash AMT has done. Um, going back into the plastic and actually making changes to make it more accurate, more model friendly, and give people a choice of what version to make is just phenomenal. So much better than uh, just releasing a vintage kit with updated decals. Uh, this model and subject got a fantastic treatment. And man, this is going to put a lot of pressure on their Star Wars line. Everybody's going to want this new line of Star Wars ships to get this kind of treatment where they go back and they make things accurate and better than they did in the past. Um, I don't know that we're going to see any Star Wars kits get this level of an upgrade between the vintage kits and the re-release. Um, we can certainly hope so because this is just absolutely a fantastic way to re-release a vintage kit. So we're going to start building this in the next few days. Also, in the next half week or so, we should have the complete build video of kind of the ships from the same movie, The Bird of Prey and the USS Grissom. So that video should come out this week. And hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have some build videos for the USS Excelsior. So thanks for following the channel, guys. Thanks for following us at allscaletrek.com. And we'll be back soon.